and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McFoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. And it's Friday. It's Friday. Thanks for tuning in uh, for your Friday edition of Wake Up Missoula. Yeah. We've got lots of stuff going on for you guys. We've got in Darko Burax is here. We're going to interview him. We've got events. We've got some news. But up first, weather. Yes. Let's talk about weather. Um, <laughs> it's looking halfway decent this halfway. weekend and of course most of you guys will be out and about during the uh you know the festivities that inquire with the weekends uh mm -hmm. that's happening of halloween it's basically yes. it's technically halloween weekend which is I weird so. you, you, you wouldn't think that halloween would happen next weekend so chances are people are gonna be out and about wearing mm -hmm. costumes maybe like cashing in on that whole killer, killer clown thing but of course oh. dress appropriately not like you like it was like scandalous or whatever but just just like just warm because it's it's missoula so and so anyways, what can people expect? It is currently 47 degrees outside. There's going to be areas of fog today, this morning, but of course it's going to be partly cloudy tonight with a low of 37 degrees. So 37 degree weather. It's it's not freezing, but it is cold. Um, Saturday it's going to be mostly sunny, then slight chance of rain. Uh, it's at 57. And of course Saturday night, if you guys are going out that night, it's going to be 70% chance of rain, um, basically continuing on up and through Monday for Halloween. So. Um, you know, hopefully most of the rain will pass and then on uh, Monday for Halloween we'll actually um, see some clear weather for some yeah. kids to be able to go out and about and stuff. But of course, uh, before um, I kind of get into it, I made a PSA with uh, Sergeant Travis Welsh uh, from the Missoula Police Department and I wanted to show a little uh, taste of that and of course it, it'll be airing on MCAT sporadically. So um, without further ado, here's a nice PSA and when we come back we'll have some news, uh, some um, quickie news events with Noel. Hello. Sergeant Travis Wells with the Missoula Police Department here to remind you of some safety tips this Halloween. Plan your trick-or-treating route. Carry a flashlight or glow stick with you. When crossing the street, make sure drivers can see you, otherwise stay on the sidewalk. Dark colors may seem like a fun way to express yourself, but reflective tape and brighter colors will help drivers see you and make everyone more aware. Masks can obstruct a child's vision and breathing, so when possible, use face paint instead. Children under 12 years of age should be accompanied by an adult. And drivers need to remember that as soon as the sun goes down, the kids come out. So at the end of the day, be aware of trick-or-treaters and have a safe Halloween. All right. Nice. Where did you get those that stock footage? I got from? Uh, stock footage from old uh, I PSAs. I was going to say, is that, that old MCAT stuff? No, 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 no. Just okay. other PSAs from other uh, states that do it and public access and whatnot. That's so, awesome. um, what's happening in the world today? So, uh, up first, what's happening in the world? I got this first news story from CNN. So, you know, uh, the people that over at the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe that have been protesting the North Dakota Access Pipeline. So, everything has kind of like come to a full. Uh, you know, the tensions are heated and everything has been really intense. And so on Thursday, actually, police officers um, deployed beanbags, pepper spray gas, wow. and unleashed a high-pitched siren as they tried to disperse the crowd. And they actually ended up arresting 141 people after, like, hours of clashes. So I guess it was, like, a literal standoff. And then at the end, they arrested 141 people. Um, and they said they cited that they were trespassing on public property and they weren't allowed to be there. That's why they arrested them. Hmm. But the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe had earlier set up tents and teepees on the land, which they said belongs to the tribe under a 19th century treaty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that has been really, really intense. And so 141 people have been arrested. So hopefully that their efforts can, um, you know, their efforts are not, um, I guess I guess their efforts aren't seen as like in a bad light and that they can go forth with their everything. And Well, yeah, because if you really think about yeah. it, they would have all been arrested yeah. ASAP. But now they're arresting them? It seems kind of fishy if you really think it. About seems it seems fishy to me too. Yeah. yeah. So good luck processors out there and I hope that they listen to your calls that you know this would be environmentally bad. Yeah. Well let's try not to escalate things a little even more. It's, true. it's gonna make everyone look bad. It's true. Yeah. Okay. And so then my another uh, news story, this is from the Missoulian. So they you guys know of the Ryan Lauren, Roaring Lion fire that happened over the summer. It cost eleven million dollars to fight and it destroyed sixteen homes. So they finally have found the cause of it and they have finally discovered people responsible for it. Yes. So three eighteen year olds and one sixteen year old female has been charged with negligent misdemeanor negligent arson as well as um, a felony 
Yeah. Yeah, and so, you know, it cost them $11 million to fight, ruined 16 homes. And so what they said is that the four had built a campfire four days before the fire sprang to life on just a small bluff just off of the Roaring, Roaring Lion Creek. And I guess they hadn't put it out effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, the kids said that they'd pour water and they poured dirt on it um, and even felt the fire the next day to make sure it was 100% gone. But um, investigators believe that the campfire, which was not fully extinguished, crept through pine needles, twigs, and uh, a duff right before a cold front swept through the area and sent the flames in the canopy to create a blaze that would eventually burn more than 13 square miles. So uh, four teenagers are responsible for it, and they're going to face arson and felony charges. Yeah. Which, yeah. And it was a fairly dry summer as well. It was. Like, I mean, it, a lot of times it doesn't really matter if you pour water on a fire. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you like, throw water from a pail, it basically is dust. It's like, yeah. I, I put some water from the river, and then yeah. and they just go, Phew. it's mm -hmm. like, huh. Yep. I'm it, like Rip Taylor. <laughs> you have to, yeah, do more things. And honestly, like, that late in the summer, it's just not smart to start a fire. And they actually had a picture of it because the reason that they found these kids was because one of them had posted a photo of it on Instagram, and they had uh, investigators that just scoured the internet looking for it. Yeah. And so they found it. And uh, the photo is, like, in a brush. Like, the photo has got trees and sticks and leaves near it. It's not in, like, a flat clearing, yeah. which would be a better idea to have a fire. Yeah. Um, and then my last uh, news story is if you guys remember earlier this year about the bunch of people that took over that Oregon bird sanctuary in the beginning of November, beginning of January. So it was this man named Ammon Bundy and then his brother and a bunch of followers took over the Oregon Bird Sanctuary on January 2nd. Um, and so it was because they had objected to prison sentences handed down to Dwight and Stephen Hammond, two local ranchers convicted of setting fires. They demanded the government free the father and son and re relinquish control of public lands to local officials. So that was their reasoning. Um, but a jury delivered a uh, extraordinary blow to the government Thursday in a long running battle over the use of public lands when it acquitted all seven people that were responsible and were really in charge of uh, this land takeover. Wow. Yeah, so they had like a standoff for like over a month with federal marshals and yeah, local officials. And so they all went to jail for it and you know, got charged and they're all acquitted. Wow, that's yeah. it's so crazy you know, mm -hmm. if you really think about it. Because, um, um, you know, um, the open space bond and all the stuff that uh, Missoula is doing to purchase open space for like parks and stuff like that and it's put on through a uh, stewardship. Yeah. Um, like if that... I mean, like, in a lot of ways, a lot of uh, areas have to uh, figure out what they're going to do in case their organization defunct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly kind of like one of the things that happens if you don't get something like, um, they, they have to go through all this, they have to deal with all this, like, federal tape and all this stuff just so they can get this thing to go through yeah. in the right way. It's very true. And so now because of this um, trial, maybe public lands will be looked at in a different light in Oregon. You know, everything is kind of like precedent in court cases. Um, but yeah, so that's what I've got for you guys. I found my last two stories in the Missoulian and my first one on CNN. But uh, first, we've got an art clip. Yes, and of course, uh, Darko Buretz is here, and he's mm -hmm. talking about a, um, a symphony concert that's happening this weekend, Saturday night and uh, Sunday matinee. Um, but of course, we'll talk more about that in a little bit um, with Darko. Um, but of course, this is the last time I can show you this clip from the Clay Studio. So take it in and make sure you guys check out the Clay Studio of Missoula before it all changes.
Hey, we're back here with Darko Budarax, and you're here to talk about the uh, Missoula Symphony Orchestra. You guys have a concert this weekend, so please tell us more. Yes, we have our uh, concert. It's called Autumn Glow. Uh, it takes place uh, this Saturday at 7.30, Sunday at 3 p.m. Uh, it's a, a concert featuring a wonderful pianist. Her name is Lisa Smirnova. She comes to us all the way from Austria, from Vienna. And being Austrian, she's very much into the music of Mozart. And this is what we're presenting with her. It's a real treat to work with an expert on this particular repertoire. Uh, Mozart, you know, he wrote music more than 220, 30 years ago when this piece was written. If you don't have the same approach playing this music, it can get a little boring. But with her, it never is. It's always very exciting. It comes to life, and it's really a treat to work on it. Uh, in addition, we're performing a very autumnal piece, Brahms's Fourth Symphony, hence the, the title, Autumn Glow. Um, and that's uh, one of the great works for orchestra and a real treat to prepare this week uh, with the ensemble. Cool. You guys tend to have a theme every year for the Missoula Symphony Orchestra. What is your theme this year? Uh, generally, as every year, we, we try to explore uh, the best uh, of orchestral music that, that's there to offer. And each piece uh, that we perform is programmed in such a way to give contrast across the season. So our first concert, for example, we presented music of Debussy, La Mer, very uh, uh, French, early 20th century style. Here we go into the Romantics with uh, Brahms and then, um, you know, uh, classical concerto in the first half. Next concert will be a Mozart uh, C minor mass, which is big choral work. So always something different. And uh, the idea is that our audiences, every, every uh, show that they come, they see really what's best of orchestral music that we have. That's our, our mission. And how do you guys find your soloists? How do you pick them out? Uh, generally, it's word of mouth uh, in the industry. It's uh, personal contacts. Um, yeah, it just kind of depends. Each case is a little different. And so why did you guys choose her for this concert? Um, specifically, this aspect of her approach to Mozart. It's, um, uh, like I said, if you just play the music through, it can get a little dull. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very, very lively playing, what she brings to it. Yeah. Let's uh, talk a little bit more about her. Um, like, what, what, I mean, what did she? Who did she play with most of the time? And so, one of the big things with Lisa. This is really a, a soloist of international stature. Uh, she's performed um, in the greatest Viennese halls in the Concertgebouw in Amsterdam. She's the winner of the 2012 uh, Recording Prize by the BBC. So, it's really a high-profile so soloist for us to be able to bring in. And um, I'm, like I said, I'm. I'm that's another part of our mission is to be able to present soloists like this in Missoula, to bring it to our community and to really show uh, the best artists on the classical music scene today to bring them to our town. And so where can people find out more information about that? And about so uh, the best place is our website, missoulasymphony.org. Uh, tickets are available. Uh, they range from $10 and up. There's a general admission uh, section on Sunday, which is nice because you can choose uh, whatever seat you'd like to sit in. Uh, but um, in general, the, the website is a good place to, to start. You can also call us, 721-3194. Um, and uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing people this weekend. Nice. Yeah. And so how can people buy tickets? Um, so directly online, you, you yeah. can buy tickets. Or if you'd like, you can visit us at the office or uh, call us. What's yeah. the price range? Uh, $10 and up. Is there anything else you want to say? Just I'm really excited about this weekend. I'm excited about working with the orchestra all year long. You know, it's really a treat to be able to work with guest artists and on this type of repertoire. Um, one note to uh, to keep in mind is that the Missoula Symphony Holiday Show is coming up the first weekend of December. Um, that's been so popular, has actually sold out often a month in advance. So now we've added the third show. Uh, so it's going to be Saturday and then two shows on Sunday, a matinee and an evening performance. So um, if if you're looking for tickets, this is a thing to think about now. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so once again, Adarko Buderats and the Missoula Symphony Orchestra is doing Autumn Glow, which is happening this weekend, October 29th, 7.30 p.m., and then on Sunday at 3 p.m. Very good. All right. So if you want more information, you can go to missoulasymphonyorchestra.org. Missoulasymphony.org. Yep. Uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll be right back right after this. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kate. Are you new to Missoula County or curious if you're election ready? Well, you're in luck. My voter page is the Secretary of State's voter access portal where you can find anything and everything you need to know about your election status. To get there, visit myvoterpagemt.com.
My Voter page will inform you if your information is current with our office. Double check your residential status, your mailing address, and more. This will save you from any issues on election day. You will know if you're an absentee voter by seeing important notice at the top of the screen. You can even track the status of your absentee ballot through the mailing and voting process. If you do not identify as an absentee voter, you will see information on the location of your polling place, directions, and other important information for election day. Be sure to check out my voter page well before November 8th to make sure you're election ready. Oh shoot, I didn't know where my camera was. <laughs> okay, so I've got some events for you guys going on, but of course we have our national days first. So today is National Chocolate Day, National Pharmacy Buyer Day, which I looked that up, that didn't have anything. What they said is National Pharmacy Buyer Day is celebrated annually on the Friday of the last full week in October. And so I guess that's just when you buy things from your pharmacy? I have no idea. Um, it's National Frankenstein Friday, and it's National Breadstick Day. So just eat your breadsticks all you want, you guys. But it's also Friday, and so at first I've got some children's activities to keep your little ones entertained all throughout the day and to keep you busy with them. So we've got Family Fun Time at Mismo Gymnastics at 9.30. There's an open gym for ages walking to 12 years. We've got Tiny Tales at the Missoula Public Library. So this is for ages birth through three years. They sing songs, they hear nursery rhymes, they hear finger plays, as well as stories and art activities. And then there's Family Story Time. That's going to be at the Public Library. It's 10.30, but it's a bit of an older crowd, and that's where they hear stories and also do more art activities. At the Children's Museum of Missoula is Mandarin Starters. It starts at 11, so they're going to be teaching and learning some Mandarin. And then at 11 is Preschool Playgroup. That's over at Roots Acro Sports Center. This is for ages walking to five years. So they set up different activities and stations around the gym, and then parents and children get to rotate and choose what they want to do. We have a spooky cupcake workshop for ages two to six at Taste Buds Kitchen that starts at 11 a.m. It's only $20 per parent, one parent and child. And then we have our teen writers group at the Public Library at 3.30. This is for teens uh, to get and give some good feedback, play with words, eat some chocolate, you know, have a place to hang out. And then over at the Missoula Family YMCA, they've got the family fun time. They have lots of activities for children and nice comfy chairs for adults to hang out or you can join your kids in all the fun. Spider feeding is at the Missoula Butterfly House in Insectarian. This starts at four o'clock. They're gonna be feeding Rosie, the Chilean rosehair tarantula. Through this, you can learn about spiders feeding and hunting habits. Water Lilies has got a Halloween psychic fair that starts at four o'clock. And then over uh, at the Imagination Brewing Company, this is put on by the Montana Anthropology Student Association. It's their annual Halloween party. It's open to all anthropology undergrad and grad students in Montana. But I'm sure you could just go and say you're an anthropology student. Um, and then over at Roots Acro Sports Center, we've got our Halloween Acro Team Spooky Show. So starting at 5.30, they're going to be gymnasts that will be putting on some awesome spooky for performances. So it's $8 a ticket. There's a family pass for $32, which is up to five people. It includes parents and siblings only. And then at the Top Hat Lounge, we've got Family Friendly Friday. It presents Acousticals. It starts at 6 o'clock. And then over at Gold Boats and RV, we have an avalanche class that starts at 6. Um, and so it's just all about avalanche knowledge and how to test for them and what to do if you're caught in one and everything you need to know. So if you guys want to sign up for that, you can call 549-6169. And then we have got our Irish music session at the Union Club at 6. At the University of Montana in the UC Ballroom is American Cancer Society's Masquerade Ball that starts at 6 o'clock. At 7 o'clock over at the Missoula County Fairgrounds is the Missoula Haunted House. And then at 7.30 is Dracula. That'll be at the University of Montana. Also 7.30 at MCT is Tarzan, the stage musical. And then 8 o'clock at 8 o'clock and at midnight is a Rocky Horror Show Live. That'll be at the Wilma Theater. Tickets are about $32. Top Hat Lounge has got an evening with Keller Williams. It starts at 9 o'clock. And then over at the VFW, uh, they've got a Halloween special. So Geist in the Sacred Ensemble, 
Dancing Plague of 1518, Ancient Forest, Pale People, and Cairns. Canes? I never know how to say their band name. But that is all at 9. That's going to be at the VFW. $3 for 21 and up, or at $6 if you're 18 to 20. And then we've got a couple um, bands happening tonight. So we've got Idol Ranch Hands at the Union Club at 9.30. Troublesome is at the Sunrise Saloon also at 9.30. Um, For the Fun of It tour is going to be at the Stage 112 at 10. Tons of Fun, Wormwood, DJ Zoll, and Sincerely Grown will be playing. And then my last event is a Rocky Horror Show at the Wilma Theater at midnight. So that's what's going on in your community um, as of Friday. Up next, I do believe that we've got Teen Talk. Yes, Teen Talk. Today's... um theme of Teen Talk is Halloween and pumpkin carving. So, um, here is the intro followed by the episode of Teen Talk. And I'm here with... Hello, I'm Neil Wells. Hello, I'm Neil Wells. I'm Neil Wells. Um, what? (laughs) Okay, let's start this over. And with Neil Wells. So, today we're talking about Halloween. What are your guys' Halloween plans? We'll start with you, Neil. Well, I'm gonna sit on my couch and eat Snicker bars. (laughs) Snickers? Yeah. Are you gonna do anything else? It's too cheap to buy any other candy. Nope. Nope. You, Neil? I'm gonna dress up as Neil Wells. Ah. (laughs) Good choice. Good choice. But uh, I'm not gonna go trick or treating. What what variation of Neil Wells, Neil? Like uh, Generation One, or like what what generation of Neil Wells? Second. Second gen Neil Wells. What about you, Neil? Wells, Let's see where I did that. Uh-huh. Um, uh, I'm probably not gonna go trick or treating. Probably just gonna mess around on my one wheel. Um, hate, 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 um, <laughs> I have so many plans. Um, I think I'm, my neighbor has a big thing going on, so I'm gonna go over there. Barbecue. Um, she, um, I'm gonna go to uh, Mansion Heights where they give out those Ooh. like candy bars Ooh. the size of Texas. Yeah, oh, I should yeah. Do that. Yeah, you should. I've never done that at home. I mean, like all kinds of things. Halloween's my favorite holiday, and then I'm also dressing up too and everything. And hi. I'm planning on uh, going to a maze and the Missoula Haunted House with some friends. Oh, hey. Yeah. You're going to go to the Neil Wells? Oh, yes. The Neil Wells, Missoula Neil Wells. (laughs) Neil Wells. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, what's our next topic? (laughs) Hmm? Pumpkin carving. Oh, pumpkin carving. Oh. Okay. So, have you have any of you uh, carved any pumpkins yet? Yes. <laughs> no, but I have a pumpkin. Mm-hmm. Tell me about your pumpkin, Neil. Okay, so this pumpkin was big, and it was a healthy pumpkin, so it was hard to cut it. And mm-hmm. of course, I had no pumpkin tools, so I had to do it with a butter knife. <laughs> and then eventually, after that, after cutting my hand multiple times, I put it on my porch and said, But it was a butter knife. Screw it. But it was a butter knife. Yeah, no. How did it yeah, turn out? How did you out? cut yourself? I used a steak knife. Sorry, I had a transition from a butter knife to a steak knife. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about your pumpkin that you have not carved. It has. It's smaller, but it has a really long stem. Is it a prime? Com- uh, is it a prime pumpkin? Mine too. Like Amazon Prime. <laughs> yeah, I ordered it on Amazon Prime, so uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it would be a prime pumpkin. I think I'm gonna do that thing <laughs> where. I think we do the thing where the uh, the stem is the nose. Oh. 
Uh, I like it. I've never done that before, though. Cool. Do you, Neil? Oh. You better not carve uh, a one-wheel into your pumpkin, Neil. Neil. Why would I do... Okay, I don't, have, I don't have pumpkin yet, but... Uh, I was thinking about doing one of those designs where, like, the... I did this once. The pumpkin is barfing out its own pumpkin guts. Well, I've done that before. It's pretty... <sighs> okay. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I haven't carved any pumpkins yet. I'm probably gonna carve one this weekend. But, um, maybe a few. But I have one on my porch that doesn't... I bought at the farmer's market a couple weeks ago, but it hasn't been carved yet. And I'm probably gonna do, um... Jack Skellington. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. That's always a classic. Classic. And then maybe, um... Ooh, I haven't decided yet. Maybe the Slayer logo. Whatever. Slayer logo. I'm a Die Hard Slayer fan. I always Whoa, thought, uh... That's gonna be tough. I always thought it'd be cool to do a, uh... Like a scarecrow with a pumpkin head. A jack o lantern oh, hey, head. Yeah. But use all the pumpkin guts, like dye them red, and have them pouring out of the scarecrow's, uh... Oh like a cavity in its chest or something. Whoa. Yeah. That would be major. Well, you have four days to do that. Yeah. Right. It's till my favorite holiday. I'm Neil Wells, and Halloween's coming up. Woo! Say goodbye to Neil Wells, Neil Wells, Neil Wells, Neil Wells, and Neil. Neil. See Neil Wells. Signing off now, Neil Wells. Wells. All right, we're back. <laughs> that was Teen Talk with Neil Wells. With Neil Wells and more Neil Wells. Yes. That was hilarious. Teen Talk is wonderfully awkward. Yes. I love it. That's perfect. Yeah. It's but of course, uh, um, let me tease a couple more things. I have uh, um, Flagship Friday video of the week. It's 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 more seriously taken um, than my other Flagship Friday videos of the week. And I also have some city council where they talk about suicide. <laughs> All right, so here is uh, Noel McAvoy. Yes, and then... Your rest of your weekend events. Thank you, Scott. So now I've got West Rica, the rest of our weekend events. That's what I just said. And I'm, this is my segment, <laughs> I'm sorry. And a camera angle that's not awkward. <laughs> okay, so you guys, Saturday is National Cat Day, wow. National Oatmeal Day, and wow. National Hermit Day. So you literally could just stay inside with your cat and eat oatmeal. That sounds great. That sounds like a perfect Saturday. <laughs> but to kick off our Saturday events, we have our farmer's markets, which are still going on. I believe there's like one or two weekends left. This may even this be, the be the last weekend. One. Yeah. And so we have our farmer's market at the Red X's from 8 to 1. Our people's market on Pine Street from 9 to 2 outside of Thomas Marbar and Jimmy John's. And then our Clark Fork market down at Karis Park from 8 to 1. I want to suggest you go to the farmer's market. It's kind of sad. <laughs> and then, so we've got a late migrants target a Browns Lake trip put on by the Five Valleys Audubon. They are going to be meeting at 8.45 a.m. in the UM's Adams Center parking lot in the northwest corner. It'll be an all-day trip to Browns Lake to look for scoters and loons. Um, so dress appropriately, meet there at 8.45, and bring lunch. I'm going to name my firstborn scoter. You should. Yo, scoter. Yo, scoter. <laughs> <laughs> Radical. <laughs> um, okay, and then over at Root Soccer Sports Center, they've got their trampoline jam. Oh, I got to Sorry, you guys, I gotta fix my stuff. Okay. Over at Roots Acro Sports Center, they have their trampoline jam. Starts at 10 a.m. This is a structure dropping class that focuses on this on front and back flip progressions. Um, it's eight dollars drop in and twelve dollars for siblings. And then over at Green Path Herb School is their herbal actions and energetics workshop. Starts at 10 a.m. and so explores how, when, and which kind of herbs to use with particular condition or person. At the Missoula Public Library, they've got architects and other spooks. It starts at 10 a 10 30 a.m. So uh, Scott and our uh, other co-worker Mason are actually going to be at this. So what it is, it's going to be discussing new concepts for the children's floor of the future library. There'll be gently spooky activities by the Children's Museum, us, MCAT, Spectrum, and the Missoula Public Library. So from 10 30 to noon, all these different organizations are going to do kind of like a quick um, preview of what they do and what they're all about and how they really are going to be wonderful to be in the library. Taste Buds Kitchen has a Halloween Haunted House workshop for the family. So it's at 11. It's uh, $35 per child and one parent. Over at Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium, they've got a Halloween party. It starts at 11. They've got, from 11 to 3, they've got games, music, treats, and more. They'll have activities in the, for, in the classroom and treats for any trick or treaters. That sounds fun. 
at the Dun Roven Ranch. There's a Halloween party for pets and people. Starts at 11. Um, it'll be interviewers on site to listen to the story of you and your pet. That's cute. There'll also be a costume contest for your pets and prizes available. That's nice. It's kind of like when people like want to talk about their kids, but no one cares. You know, people want to talk about their pets, but now these people will care and they'll listen to you. That's nice. I'm happy. <laughs> it's true. It's a true thing. I always talk, try to talk about my nephew, and people are like, oh, yeah, that's cute. And then they oh, walk when off. Is this over? <laughs> like, yeah. It's cool, though. I don't know. We all have it. We all have family. And, mm. Okay, so the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center is family yoga at 1130. And then, this is really cool. I know that there are a lot of people over at Mask Studio that are really, really excited about this. So there is Fire Eating with Shade Flame Water. Starts at noon, and so he is world famous, and he's from Australia. And so they've got beginner and intermediate workshops on fire eating um, uh, tomorrow. On Saturday, yeah, starting at noon. So you guys can check that out, and you guys can just uh, check out the Mask website or their Facebook to find out more information and see how you can sign up. Go for the accent. Stay yeah. for the fire. Fiery. Fiery and foreign. <laughs> the two F's. <laughs> Over at E3 Convergence Gallery, starting at 1, is a Saturday watercolor class. Um, and then over at Free Cycles Missoula, they've got a couple bands. They've got the Scurfs and Hot the Cat. They'll be playing at 5.30 over at Free Cycles tomorrow. And then uh, at Ted's Food Vineyard and Winery, we have Bases Covered that starts at 6 o'clock. That's a band. Aaron Busses it will be playing at the Missoula Brewing Company in Highlander Tap Room, also at 6. There'll be live music with Pat and Charlie at Imagination Brewing Company, also at 6. <laughs> <laughs> the odd couple, maybe. <laughs> I don't know who Pat or Charlie are, but they're playing. Um, a Carousel for Missoula has got their Haunted Hollow that starts at 6 o'clock. Wolf in the Moons will be playing at Draftworks Brewing Company at 6 o'clock. At the University of Montana at 7 is a movie showing at Suicide Squad. Also at 7 at the Missoula County Fairgrounds is the Missoula Haunted House. Mm -hmm. And then, as we just heard about Autumn Glow, the Missoula Symphony Halloween Concert. They say it's a Halloween concert, but according to Darko, it's not. So that'll be at the University of Montana at 7.30. Dracula is still playing at the University of Montana at 7.30. Their last day is going to be on Sunday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So uh -oh. the last time you can see them. And then over the Downtown Dance Collective, starting at 8, they've got a salsa class. It's Salsa Ruta de Casino, which is salsa in the round, kind of like salsa square dancing. Um, so it's only $5 to pop. It's only $5 to get in. And they'll teach you the dance if you want to, and you kind of bring a partner or just go alone. We've got the Rocky Horror Show live at the Wilma Theater at 8 o'clock and at midnight on Saturday. They only have two days and four shows, so that's the only time you guys can check it out. And then Disco Bloodbath is back. It's going to be at 8 p.m. at different venues. The venues will be Stage 112, Monk's Bar, The Real Lounge, Old Beck VFW, and American Legion Post. Um, the Ghetto Dip Gypsy will be traveling and will be shuttling people back and forth. So as American Legion Post is like way out on the other side of town, it's off of 6th Street. So if you want to be able to do that, you can, you know, Pick up on the on the Ghetto Gypsy. Go out there. They'll be running pretty much every 15 minutes, and they're running from 10 to 2:30 a.m. And his last stop will be at the American Legion Hall. Um, and so that's going to be $12 until October 28th, and then it'll be $15 a day of the show. And it's 18 and up. And then we've got a couple. We've got a movie at the Roxy Theater. It's called It Follows. It starts at nine. Absolutely, with Chris Moon at the Badlander, also at nine. Um, there is a costume Halloween party at the Sunrise Saloon at 9.30, and Trouble, Troublesome will be playing. Band in Motion at the Union Club at 9.30, and then Letter B, uh, Talking Dead, will be at the top at Lounge at 10. So you guys can check out MissoulaEvents.net, the University of Montana website, the Missoulian or the Independent for more events. I always get all of my events from MissoulaEvents.net. Oh. Yeah. Well, we got um, some city council stuff. Nice, um, okay. This is the public safety and health, and of course I did talk about... Uh, I did talk very briefly about this last week. It was like kind of like a side note I did mm -hmm. when I did the public, uh, I mean the uh, um, Missoula County Health Department mm -hmm. when they had their meeting. Mm -hmm. um, they, uh, okay, so here is the public safety and health. It happened on uh, Wednesday. Um, the QPR training is available for people who wish to help those uh, who suffer from depression and are suicidal. Thus far, over 42,000 people committed suicide in the year 2014, which outranked vehicular cause death. Wow. You know, 
So of course, we start off the meeting with Heidi Kendall, and she's the suicide prevention officer from the Missoula County Health Department, and she gave a presentation, but this is um, uh, less, less about the presentation and more about how she feels about it. In a suicide, there there is almost always depression, you know, crisis, a mental health um, crisis, and it it passes. And if there is a firearm available, um, then that is the quickest way, most effective way to complete the suicide. If um, uh, if other means are used, it is. I mean, this is how. The experts explain this. Um, if other methods are used, there's time for the um, for the suicidal individual to change their mind and call 911 or get to help themselves. Um, there's a story about the bridge, Golden Gate Bridge. There have been 30 people, I think, who have survived a jump off the Golden Gate Bridge, and all of them, except one or two, said that as soon as they jumped, they wished they hadn't. So, All right, so that's kind of gives an example of run around. Um, the course, the whole meeting is online, where they actually have the presentation with the video and display and stuff. Most of the meeting was all about how you, um, um, you, at, you at home, or um, me myself, um, can um, look for signs of suicide and see how we can help people who are in need of um, treatment or um, just basic help. Um, the next part is from Heidi Kinsel, and he and she talks about um, one of the questions we're asked is um, um, Oregon, of course, has a, a statute in law basically uh, that says uh, death by dignity. Hmm. So for people with like chronic pain that's just like really suffering, that they're able to uh, take their own life without uh, it being considered suicide. So that's she talks about euthanasia versus suicide. Is, is suicide always wrong? Is you know, are there cases where it's okay for someone to decide that their life is over. And the main message that Kim and I give in our um, suicide prevention classes is there is hope. Suicide is preventable. Um, our goal is to reduce the number of suicides even among people who feel like they have no reason to live. Um, we get questions, um, we got a question at Hellgate, is suicide always wrong? And, you know, the best answer I could come up with was think about the people who are left behind. And, um, you know, so you can, it's a, it becomes a philosophical dis discussion after a while. But All right, so, you know, it, it, it's, it's definitely um, um, one of those things um, that you just don't really know about. And, of course, uh, John Wilkins, and he talks about his uh, bout with depression as well because he suffers from chronic pain that he's been suffering since the 90s. Oh. And this is what he has to say about that. And uh, I never had a doctor ask me if I was depressed. All I did was have doctors give me Percodin and Oxycontin and all that stuff until I took it on myself to get rid of that stuff and not use it anymore. I did finally have a doctor a year ago ask me if I was depressed. I said, yeah, I can get depressed when it hurts really bad. So his answer was give me a pill. And I've not heard anything more about it. So I think our medical people really need to be uh, a little bit more aware of what's going on with that and talk to their patients a little bit more. So. Yep. Okay, so yeah, that's um, I that's, that. that's one of the um, I mean the troubles um, that a lot of people have is like you know like a lot of times like you always see these ads on television be like oh you know if you're suffering from mild to severe per depression have a pill and it's not necessarily what you can do but of course if you guys don't suffer from depression there's a lot of people out there who do suffer from depression and here are some of the signs that you can always look for they're subtle but they're also there. Um, um, signs of uh, if you look like they're going away without giving any, any, any indication of where they're going, it's just like, oh, I'm going to be somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it's yep. just like, where are you going? It's like, don't, don't worry about it. That kind of thing. Yep. Um, if they just want to stay in and sleep all day, it's just like, I just, you know, I mean, like, sure, it's, it's fine to be lazy sometimes. Be like, I just want to take a lazy day. But if it's like somebody who just like does, cannot leave their house, just mm -hmm. wants to live inside their house and just like just not do anything, just like 
not do anything at all. Um, of course, if they start giving away possessions. Yep. And like, a lot of people never really just give away possessions. Most of the time they try to sell the possessions and stuff like that. Once in a while they maybe give, give away stuff they can't make money off of. But most of the time, if they start giving away possessions, that's a big sign as well. Um, that's, that means they're getting even closer to the end. Um, if they are evasive or they don't want to talk about their feeling, a lot of times they're just like, ah, oh, right, right, right. You know, like, like, to a point where it's just like, kind of like, it's like you don't really know how they're doing, and they're usually just kind of, I don't know, I guess the best way of describing it is that they're just like downers a lot of times. They're just always down. And there's nothing that can get them out. Of and, being down. and of course, like, one of the yeah. things is that um, everything that um, they experience, it automatically just makes them feel bad. Like, yep. everything, mm -hmm. even joy, every little thing, it, like, a lot of times people who are always suddenly happy. Like for uh, you, like it's the, like the, probably the biggest sign is when somebody is like happy, mm -hmm. like when they're depressed for such a long time, and then suddenly they're happy. That's like literally the biggest red flag you can look for, because it, they've already set a time when they're gonna actually commit suicide. Yep. They're just like, oh, I feel so much better now that I'm going to do this now. Yeah. And they, um, yeah, I mean, it's a big sign. They they probably harm themselves in one way or another. And of course, uh, I'm not much, uh, you know, I think the best advice you can do is like, I'm not much to ask people how they're doing, but it's a lot of times it was, um, you shouldn't treat how are you like a hello. Yeah. I, I think that's the best advice that I can give. Mm -hmm. to and there. also, like, if you do see someone that's depressed, you know, uh, a lot of times people just need someone to listen. These people feel very, very alone. Yeah. And that's when, you know, I feel like a huge contributing factor to suicide is just feeling alone and feeling like there's no way out. So just listening and like noticing and being aware of so and just being down, yeah. you know, be a good friend. And even if you don't know them very well, sometimes it takes a stranger to help another stranger to even pull that person out of what they have. So that's why it's going to be good to... And if everyone. you want more information, um, you can log on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Um, here's the website right here. Um, you can just go to that meeting. It's the public safety and health meeting. It's a whole presentation about QPR uh, training. It's the uh, QPR Institute. It's basically like a, a CPR for suicide for people out there who are looking for signs of suicide. And I think it's a great program. And any, in, in, the more people who know this kind of training, the better it is for them as well. Um, I think that'll conclude uh, my city, city council report for the day. Yes. And I'm gonna. Um, Quickly go to an art clip, and then after I'm going to introduce another clip from our flagship Friday. So this is an art clip from the uh, the Zach, which is talking about the day of the Ze day of the dead, and this art will be on display until um, November seventh. All right, We're that back. was the art clip. Yeah. And mo these two art clips we're going to be showing, I think uh, I can't show the uh, other art clip, which is going to be at the uh, Clay Studio of Montana, uh, Missoula. How come you can't show it? Because this is the last day I can show it, oh. and we already showed it today. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> that makes guy. sense, you guys. You already saw it. <laughs> yeah. But so, of course, yeah. um, I, I, I'm going to introduce um, this clip a little bit, um, talk a little more back in context. Um, um, the, the Montana Food Bank does an annual event during um, Halloween. It's called Trick or Eat. It's where they collect non-perishable food from around town and they bring it into the food bank and have a big kind of like uh, giveaway for a lot of people who are in need or who um, may not be able to afford um, 
most foods. So of course, um, I made a nice little uh, piece on this with the, some of the kids that I worked with at Washington Middle School where they got a chance to run around and pick up some food from um, very generous people. I don't want to carry anything. <laughs> <laughs> got bass, like p bags of food. So the Missoula, the food bank Missoula, um, can have food for the people that are in need. Trick or treat script. Okay. Hi, we're students from the Washington Middle School flagship program. We're trick or treating. We're trick or treating to collect non perishable food items for the Missoula Food Bank. To help families in need, would you like, were you willing to donate anything? And then it says thank you. Cool. So did you guys uh, get a lot of houses? Yeah, we got a lot of eggs. And there's a few houses that didn't donate. To there was only one excuse, because there was only one person. So they said, first, this is not my house. Second, there's a kid that goes to Washington Middle School, that goes here, so that might, they might take care of it. Um, what's that thing called? No soliciting. No soliciting, yeah. No soliciting, I think. And then, like, if we did go to the house, it was, we didn't go shopping. Yeah. What do you got to say to uh, future uh, Washington Middle Schoolers about this event? Uh, be prepared to have your feet hurt. Um, Make sure you have a friend with you, because we're if it's not, it's not very fun. And make sure you don't call people perish, per, perishable food. <laughs> okay, students. so um, she accidentally called us perishable students. Um, yeah, don't do that. Don't get all confused. <laughs> all right, so that was uh, yeah, nice. I job. was cracking up about perishable students. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet little muffins. That's awesome. Yeah. Way to go, kids. Yeah. They're so cute. That was good, Scott. I like that. Yep. It's some great stuff. And, of yeah. course, you can find great stuff like that and more by logging on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. And I just realized I didn't tease this at the very beginning no, of the show. That's no, okay. I didn't. I'm terrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can li like us on our Facebook page. <laughs> you can follow us on our Twitter at wakeupmissoula. MCAT also has a Twitter page. You guys can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook. And to find out more information or to watch us live online, just go to MCAT.org. Yep. MCAT.org is a great resource where you can actually find live streaming events and more live streaming stuff because MCAT's doing a lot more live streaming and I'm saying that because uh, MCAT's going to be uh, filming and live streaming the last Sentinel uh, football game, Sentinel High School Spartans football game tonight at around 7 o'clock. Nice. You can check it out. It's going to be on Facebook, YouTube, It'll be on our MCAT.org underneath high school sports. Another thing you guys can look forward to is our MCAT stop it, drop in stop motion animation workshop tomorrow from 1 to 5 for only 10 bucks. Or you can do a half day from 1 to 3 or 3 to 5. You guys can stop in. We make some stop motion animation workshop videos, you know, videos, or else we just do some live action. And as it's Halloween weekend, your little ones are totally more than welcome to wear their costumes. I'll be wearing mine. And so we can just have a spooky time. And so that's every Saturday. Yep. Yeah. But thanks for tuning in with us, you guys. We hope that you all have a great weekend. But before we go, Scott, what are you being for Halloween? I am going to be, uh, uh, you'll see on Monday. Uh, great. Well, I'm going to dress up for Monday for our Halloween mm -hmm. episode as well. Yes. And it's going to be awesome. I'm going to be L Driver from Kill Bill, Daryl Hannah's character with the eye patch. Mm. Yeah, that's going to be pretty fun. So I'm excited about that. So you guys will see that on Monday. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in with us. I hope you all have a great weekend. And for Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noah McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. We'll see you Monday.